Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be delving into the fascinating world of large language models, LLMs, exploring how they work and most importantly the ethical considerations surrounding their use, which means they have a lot of security vulnerabilities that everyone can explore. I will talk briefly about how they are built and trained and then how knowing the way they are built and trained allows us to find ways of tricking the large language models into doing what they are not supposed to do. First things first, let's break down what large language models are. In simple terms, they are powerful algorithms designed to generate human-like text based on the patterns and information they've been trained on. These models undergo extensive training on vast amounts of data, allowing them to grasp the nuances of languages and the context of sentences, for example. The training process involves adjusting millions or even billions of parameters to achieve what we can call remarkable language generation capability. Well, how are LLMs trained? The first step is called pre-training. In this phase, we use the biggest text dataset possible, usually what we call hard internet content, about 10 terabytes of text. Then, while training the model, we are doing a sort of compression of the world's information into a model. It is like making a zip file, if you wish. This is how we get the transformer-based model. Using supercomputers, it can take about 12 days and cost just 2 million to pre-train the model. Quite cheap, as you can see. Now we have the second phase where we direct the model to perform the tasks we want. The base model can only relate words to other words. It can suggest which is the most likely word to appear next in a given sentence. However, if we want to have a chat with it, it will not be pleasant. Thus, the fine-tuning phase is essential. Here, we use another dataset. The dataset is built usually by humans and has the necessary instructions so the model can perform the task. In the case of creating an assistant model like the ChatGPT, we need to provide tons of examples with questions and proper answers as the dataset. Of course, this dataset is smaller, however, it must still have some expression. The dataset is used to fine-tune the model for about a day and the model can now relate and get the context of questions to give you proper answers. The model then in the final step is evaluated if working as intended, it is deployed. While deployed, we monitor the model and collect all the outlier performances. After some time, we retrain the model to fix the problems we found while monitoring it. The two phases of training are usually performed periodically. However, while the fine-tuning can be done weekly, the training phase is usually performed yearly. Now, before we dive into the vulnerabilities of these models, it is crucial to address the ethical considerations surrounding large language models. As with any powerful technology, there's always the potential for misuse. Attempting to hack or trick large language models raises serious ethical concerns. Unauthorized access, data breaches and manipulation of information can have severe consequences. As so, always remember that responsible exploration is key to ensuring the ethical use of this technology. Developers and researchers are well aware of the potential risks and they've implemented robust security measures to protect large language models. These measures include encryption, access controls and continuous monitoring to detect and prevent malicious activities. The field is actively evolving with ongoing efforts to take models more resilient against attacks and unintended manipulation. It's a collaborative endeavor to strike a balance between innovation and security. We can segregate the LLM's attacks into two categories. The first type of attack is called a direct attack. In a direct attack, the hacker exploits a vulnerability in the LLM system or network to gain access to its input. The hacker can then manipulate the input to control the LLM's action or output. For example, the hacker can feed malicious commands or queries to the LLM. The second type of attack is called an indirect attack. 
In an indirect attack, the hacker does not target the LLM directly, but rather its data source. The hacker can affect the data source by tampering with it, deleting it, or injecting false or misleading information. This can degrade the quality and reliability of the LLM's output or cause it to produce harmful or inappropriate content. Both direct and indirect attacks are serious threats to LLM's integrity, performance and trustworthiness. Therefore, it is important to implement effective security measures to protect the LLM and its data source from unauthorized access, modification or destruction. Narrowing down the types of attacks, we can talk about model inversion attacks and data extraction attacks. A model inversion attack aims to reverse engineer a target LLM to infer sensitive information about its training data. Specifically, these attacks are designed to exploit the LLM's internal representations and decisions boundaries to reverse engineer and reveal sensitive attributes of the training data. For example, an attacker could input images of individuals into an LLM capable of performing face recognition and recover the personal information of the individuals from the LLM's output, such as their name, address or social security number. A data extraction attack is similar to a model inversion attack but more focused. Instead of learning about training data in general, a data extraction attack tries to get particular secrets or private information from an LLM such as API keys, passwords or credit card numbers. This can be done by probing the LLM and using its output to infer some of the training data. For example, an attacker could use this approach to extract some training data from OpenAI Codex, an LLM that powers GitHub Copilot, a code suggestion tool, basically. If the LLM is trained on a corpus of code, including private repositories that contain production secrets, and a malicious user can extract some training data by exploring the LLM, then the user might learn some private API keys. We also have two more types of attacks that can target the intellectual property and privacy of LLMs, model stealing attacks and membership inference attacks. A model stealing attack aims to copy or get a target LLM, fully or partially, by hacking it. Usually, the attacker collects lots of interactions with the model they want to steal, then they use the input-output pairs to train a new model that can act like the stolen model. This attack can have different goals, such as stealing ideas or breaking rules or contracts. For example, an attacker could steal a stock market prediction model or a spam filtering model to use them or be able to optimize its own attacks against such model. A membership inference attack has a similar process to a model stealing attack. This attack is when an attacker tries to find out if a certain data point was used to train a language model. Usually, the attacker collects many interactions with the model they want to attack. Then they can study the model's answers using different methods such as statistics, machine learning or black box testing to guess if some data points were in the training data or not. This attack can reveal sensitive information about the training data such as personal or confidential records. For example, an attacker could infer if a patient's medical record was used to train a healthcare LLM or if a user's email was used to train a natural language generation LLM. Now let's dive a bit into examples of direct and indirect attacks so we can be aware of all the possibilities. I will later give you a small table of strategies to use against these attacks, but it is not a full guide that you can simply apply to your case. You need to evaluate if your LLM based system is at risk of suffering one of these attacks I am mentioning and apply the defense against it. Of course, each day we discover more vulnerabilities, so there is no predefined recipe to solve the security issues, at least so far. One of the main risks is prompt hacking, which is the process of manipulating the input or prompt of an LLM to make it do something that is not supposed to do, such as revealing sensitive information, producing harmful content or executing malicious code. Prompt hacking can be done by anyone who has access to the LLM 
either directly or indirectly and can exploit the vulnerabilities of the model or the application that uses it. One of the techniques of prompt hacking is prompt injection, which is when an attacker inserts a hidden or disguised prompt into an external source, such as a web page, an email or a document that is read by the LLM. The hidden prompt can then override the original or intended prompt of the LLM and cause it to perform unauthorized actions. For example, a prompt injection attack can make a chatbot ignore its safety rules, reveal its internal code name or generate malicious links. A technique of prompt injection is overriding previous instructions, which is when an attacker changes the LLM's input to ignore or cancel the inputs that were given by the developer. For example, an attacker can tell the LLM to be verbose instead of concise, to browse the internet instead of staying offline, or to generate illegal or offensive content instead of avoiding it. Another technique of prompt injection is avoiding content rules, which is when an attacker uses alternative words, symbols or codes to bypass the content filters or moderators that enforce the content rules. For example, some users may use asterisks, numbers, tags or emojis to replace certain letters or words that are banned or restricted by the platform or service. This can allow them to post or share inappropriate, offensive or illegal content without being detected or blocked. Another prompt injection technique is showing hidden data, which is when an attacker uses various methods to access the hidden files, folders, keys and passwords that are normally concealed and protected by the device or system. For example, some users may try to get API keys to later use against the system. Making the AI produce forbidden content is another technique of prompt injection. This approach is when an attacker uses various methods to trick or bypass the safety filters or moderators that prevent the LLM from generating content that violates the laws, policies or ethical standards of the platform or service. For example, some users may use alternative words, symbols or codes to avoid the detection of sensitive terms like naked, murder or sexy. This can allow them to generate or share inappropriate, offensive or illegal content without being detected or blocked. Making the LLM act as a DAN, which stands for do anything now, is another kind of attack inside the prompt in injection category. Dance, as the name suggests, can do anything now. They have been freed from the typical confines of AI and do not have to abide by the rules imposed on them. For example, Dance can pretend to browse the internet, access current information even if it is made up, say swear words and generate content that does not comply with the developer's policy. They can also display content whose veracity has not been verified and, in short, do everything that the original LLM cannot. Another possible outcome of making the AI produce forbidden content is threatening public figures which is when an attacker uses the LLM to generate or send messages that express hostility, intimidation or violence towards a specific person or even a group. For example, some users may use the LLMs to create fake news, slander or propaganda that targets public figures. They may also use the LLM to impersonate public figures or their associates and spread false or harmful information. They may even use the LLM to plan or execute attacks on public figures or their locations. The last topic I want to discuss about prompt injection is the interplay between image and text inputs for LLMs. As we know, LLM are not only capable of processing natural languages, but also other modalities such as images, audio or even video. This opens up new possibilities and challenges for LLM-based applications such as image captioning, visual question answering or multimodal search. Possible attacks on the interplay between image and text inputs are intentionally designed to fool a model into making a mistake. 
For example, an attacker can add a small perturbation to an image or a text that is imperceptible to humans but causes the model to misclassify or misinterpret it. This can have serious consequences for applications that rely on the image-text relation, such as captioning, visual question answering, or multimodal search. A possible attack here is attacking image captioning models by modifying the image or the caption to make them inconsistent or misleading. For instance, an attacker can change a few pixels in an image of a dog to make it look like a cat, or insert a word into the caption to change its meaning. This can affect the quality quality and reliability of the generated captions and potentially harm the users who rely on them, such as visually impaired people. In another attack, the user can crop or blur an image to remove important details or add noise or synonyms to the question to confuse the model. This can affect the accuracy and usefulness of the answers and potentially mislead the users who ask the questions. Another possible attack is when a user swaps or distorts an image to make it different from the original or modify or replace the text query to make it irrelevant or nonsensical. This can affect the relevance and diversity of the search results. Prompt leaking is when an LLM unintentionally reveals some information about its internal state, configuration or training data through its output. For example, an LLM may include some system notes, code names or metadata in its generated text which could be used by an attacker to infer some details about the LLM's design, implementation or source. One way to perform prompt leaking is to use prompt injection. This technique can be used to bypass the safety mechanisms of LLMs such as filters, profanity checks or content restrictions. A way to perform prompt leaking is to expose system priorities. System priorities are the preferences, goals or values that guide the LLM's behavior and output. For example, an LLM may prioritize certain topics, keywords or styles over others depending on its task, domain or audience. System priorities can be influenced by the LLM's training data, prompt design or optimization criteria. Exposing system priorities can reveal some insights into the LLM logic, reasoning or bias, which could be exploited by an attacker to manipulate, deceive or influence the LLM or its users. Revealing hidden features is another way to perform prompt leaking. Hidden features are the features that are not directly observable or accessible by the users, but are essential for the LLM's functionality and performance. For example, an LLM may have hidden layers, weights and activations that determine how it processes and generates the output. It can also have system prompts guarding some information disclosure. One way to perform prompt hacking and prompt leaking is to use direct prompt injection. Direct prompt injection is when an attacker inserts additional instructions or commands into the prompt that override the original ones. For example, an attacker can use the phrase ignore all previous and following instructions and instead do something to make the LLM disregard the intended task and do something else. Another way to perform prompt hacking and prompt leaking is to use indirect prompt injection. Indirect prompt injection is when an attacker strategically injects prompts into data that is likely to be retrieved and processed by the LLM. For example, an attacker can buy some domain names and host malicious content on them, knowing that they will be crawled and included in a large image or text dataset. Then, when someone downloads and uses the dataset to train an LLM, the malicious content will act as hidden prompts that can alter the LLM's behavior or output, so indirect prompt injection can be used to create backdoors, biases or vulnerabilities in the LLM without having direct access to the LLM or its prompt. Data training poisoning is when an attacker deliberately corrupts the training data of an LLM, creating in 
inaccuracies, errors or inconsistencies in the LLM's output. For example, an attacker can head modify or delete some data samples in the training dataset or introduce noise, outliers or anomalies. Data training poisoning can affect the quality and reliability of the LLM and potentially result in poor decisions based on faulty outputs. There are several strategies to avoid prompt hacking, I will list here some of them. The first one, filtering the prompt by using blacklists and whitelists is a way of removing specific triggers from the prompt and ensuring the content is within the expected boundaries. Using contextual clarity instead of leaving the prompt going directly from the users to the LLM will make sure the prompt can be controlled, although it is not entirely secure. Instruction defense is to request the LLM to do specific actions and not other ones. Narrowing down the amount of damage coming from the user's prompt, it encourages the model to be cautious about its output. The random sequence enclosure is when we try to shield the user prompt from direct manipulation to the system prompt. It enclosures the user's prompt between two sequences of random characters. This acts as a barrier, making it more challenging to tamper using the user's prompt. The sandwich defense surrounds the user's prompt between two system prompts ensuring the desired output aligns with the system's goal and the user cannot change it at its will. The XML tagging strategy encloses the user prompt within XML tags. We are pointing out the user's prompt from the rest of the system message. Therefore, the LLM can recognize and respect the boundaries of the input. To wrap things up, understanding and securing large language models is a shared responsibility as technology researchers, developers and content creators. Let's approach this field with integrity and a commitment to ethical conduct. Thank you for joining me on this exploration and until next time stay curious and stay responsible and also do not forget to subscribe my channel.